2019 Finance Committee meeting to order at 6.45 p.m. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion for consideration of claims. I would make a motion that the consideration of claims to be paid in the amount of $485.76, payroll and liabilities for June 7, 2019, in the amount of $207,068.96 for a total of $783,554.72. I second that. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on those? No, sir. Um, I know right before the meeting started, we were just briefly talking about what in the world this happily ever after balloon is. Could you tell us that real quick? Yes, Your Honor. That will be one of the featured balloons at the Riverton Rendezvous this year. And so they, uh, we enter into a contractual arrangement with them, and this is part two of two payments for that balloon. Great. Looking forward to rendezvous. Aren't you, Mr. Carr? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, all in favor of the motion, then? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Any other business? No, Your Honor. Your Honor, no, thank you. And we're adjourned at 6.46 p.m. We now call the June 18th, 2019 regular meeting of the Riverton City Council to order at 7 o'clock. Councilman Larson will give us the Pledge of Allegiance, and Councilmember Bordelich will give us the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight asking for your uh, love and support. We thank you for everything that you give to us every day. Um, please help guide us with wisdom and making the decisions that we need to make for the betterment of our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Kyle and Carla. I appreciate it. Would the city clerk please conduct roll call? Yes, sir. And our Councilwoman Carla Borders? Here. Councilman Tim Hancock? Here. Councilman Mike Bailey? Here. Councilwoman Rebecca Schatze? Here. Councilman Kyle Larson? Here. Councilman Corey Rhoda? Here. Mayor Richard Gard? Here. I declare that the a quorum is present. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda with the removal of item 14, utility box wrap discussion. So moved. Out. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Hancock and a second by Councilman um, Rhoda. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Motion passes. <clears throat> Anyone in the audience wishing to address the council regarding an item which is already on the agenda will be given the opportunity to speak later on. I would ask those individuals who wish to address the council at this time to approach the podium, identify yourself for the record. Um, Mayor, Council, um, Heath Steele, Chief Operating Officer, Volunteers of America, Northern Rockies. Um, I wanted to... Uh, wanted to just address the council tonight and share both my empathy and my gratitude for uh, the tough, tough challenges ahead. Um, we've been made aware of the intent to um, see a reduction in the Center of Hope's budget, and um, I, uh, I know that was not an easy decision, nor was one that was um, made without concern and an understanding on behalf of Volunteers of America, I want to um, extend our gratitude for the partnership. I, I do want to say that I think we'll have to have some dialogue to determine what access looks like. It is um, it's a very complicated program in that there are um, a multitude of state dollars that have been leveraged. Those dollars have been leveraged primarily as a result of the investment by both the city and the county. Um, I do not 
um, by any means want to leave any message or any misconceptions or any myth that it will um, cause any long-term or closure of the program or anything along those ways. What I think we're going to have to do is spend some time talking about how to allocate those resources. Um, I am uh, very grateful for Chief Murphy's communication with me and for the, for the difficult challenges ahead of him in supporting your public safety and we're going to be here to support what he needs um, over there at the program to make sure we're able to do that so um, again I think there's a dialogue and um, I've spoken with Mayor Gard I've spoken with Administrator um, Tolstad and we've agreed to get together and start doing the heavy lifting you know VOA's message has been we're a hand up not a handout in this case I think we need to be um, a very representative part Partner of the heavy lifting that needs to go on in the community. I think we all understand the effects of addiction and, and understand that in that impaired attempt in a full life is really what's getting in the way. And if there's an opportunity there to address that trauma and keep appropriate resources in place, we're committed to doing that. So that would be my message. Um, again, I'm empathetic to where you're at and I'm very much understanding that this needs to be a long-term partnership, not a short-term financial decision, and we need to keep the resources here in Riverton. Um, if you wouldn't mind that I put a period in that comment, I'd like to make one other comment on a separate subject. Um, we just recently completed Camp Postcard. Postcard stands for Peace Officers Striving to Create and Reinforce Dreams. It's a program that we've operated down in Casper, Wyoming as a leadership opportunity for fifth and sixth graders. Um, I'd just like to share with you we had a wonderful contingency from here in Fremont County. Appreciate Chief Murphy and Cody Myers' support and Amy's, the other officers that attended from Fremont County. And uh, this marks the 150th kid that's gone to our summer camp with no charge to um, anybody out of the pure benefic benefit of a philanthropic heart of a lot of folks in the state of Wyoming. So appreciate your partnership, and I'll look forward to our further dialogue on how we work through the, the grants and the process there. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, David Kellner. <clears throat> Kurt Gallitz. And we're here on behalf of Home Source Realty. Um, just wanted to make a presentation, if we could, to you guys. Um, we, I guess, first of all, just wanted to let you know um, how appreciative we are of how how forward thinking you guys are and how involved everybody has been, um, specifically City Park, the um, kick and trash program that has been initiated. Uh, one of our office meetings, we we're kind of having a discussion about how proactive this council has been and the improvements that we're seeing. And we wanted to see if there is some way we could help show our appreciation. Um, we had a series of open houses the previous weekend, and at that, we had some cards. Uh, anybody who came through in attendance, we asked them to sign if they also felt the same way and wanted to show some appreciation. And um, in addition to that, our office um, came up with a donation for some uh, gift cards at Walmart and Subway that we'd like to present um, specifically for the Kicking Trash volunteers to help buy some more supplies, help feed the, the workers as they're going out there. Thank you very much for everything you guys are doing. Hey, thanks. We appreciate you. Thank you for doing that, guys. Thank you. That's awful nice of you. We appreciate it. Is there anyone, anyone else that has anything they'd like? Dave? Dave. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Larry Wallace. I'm with Wind River Animal Welfare Association, and I'm speaking to the proposed uh, deer reduction plan, which started in, being uh, advertised in the paper back in April. Uh, I have lived in Riverton for about 14 years. As a nurse and substitute teacher, I've driven around to all parts of the city day and night in varying weather conditions. 
And in all of that time, the 14 years, I've never hit a deer on the streets of Riverton. Uh, I've planted flowers and vegetables in my yard. And uh, at times, I might have noticed a little deer droppings in the yard, but never had a problem with the deer uh, using my plants as a, as a meal time. Uh, and I think that uh, talking about a deer reduction program is going to the extreme because here we are in a wild state of Wyoming. We're not living in suburbia Chicago or, or suburbia Cleveland. Uh, all of us here have either have grown up with this presence of wildlife around us or we came to the state like I did 15 years ago because of the wildlife so abundant in this state. Uh, I would suggest a few things to those people that are bothered by the presence of the deer and who support the deer reduction plan, and that is that uh, if you have problems with, let's say, potentially cl colliding with a deer on the roadway, I suggest you obey the speed limits that are posted and particularly lower your driving speed at nighttime when things could be more hazardous. Be aware of those warning signs about the presence of deer on the roadway. And if you do see deer on the roadway getting ready to cross, you simply slow down, maybe stop, put your flashes on, blink your lights, honk your horn, allow those animals to cross the roadway. Uh, I've done that many, many times, and I always enjoy just watching the animals uh, in front of me as I'm sitting there in my car. Uh, as far as the gardeners are concerned, uh, uh, if you have a substantial garden, I would suggest putting a very secure fence around it. Uh, deer uh, can uh, not reach their noses through a tight mesh fence. Uh, you can have a gate so that you can get into the area to take care of the plants. Also, perhaps even plant things that the animals are not interested in, they, that they don't particularly want to eat. Another thing that I think is a good thing with, for gardeners is a motion detector light, because once uh, light suddenly flashes on over that garden area, those animals are going to scatter. They're not going to stay around munching on tomatoes. Uh, these deer were here in our area long before the establishment of Riverton, and I think they deserve to be here. They have to put up with uh, hunters who use long-distance scopes on their rifles to ho hunt them down during hunting season. They also have to put up with poachers who are willing to just shoot the animals from the roadway out of their vehicle. And then they also have to uh, fend for themselves against heavy grilled pickup trucks that basically mow them down on the highway. I've pulled a lot of animals off the roadway in this con mangled condition. Uh, so please, leave these deer alone to peacefully graze in the grass around our area. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Is there anyone else who would like to address us? I have some things that I would like to pass out. Back in um, May 2nd, I was driving down Main Street, and I saw uh, something that really, really interested me. It was three little boys at the corner of the Teton Hotel, and they were jumping up and down, their hands up and up in the air. And, and I, I was in my car, and I came to the stop sign, the stoplight, and stopped. And curiosity I couldn't see what they were enjoying so as I watched a police officer raised up out of the group and they were thrilled to be around this police officer so I grabbed my cell phone and and as electronically challenged as I am <laughs> I started filming and I got my dash and I got the other cars and I got a few other things but Tony has what the IT guys cleaned up for us That's all I got. <laughs> so, as a detective, I'm not going to be hired really quick, am I? But 
Uh, well, Peter McCall, please come up. And uh, also, um, Billy Whiteplume. Both of these officers in our, in our police force have been recognized for their efforts. Peter, I, I know you didn't do that for any reason, and I was, I was amazed how excited those boys were. <laughs> <laughs> the next one that I was trying to get to was the day of the splash pad opening was a little bit chaotic and a few of us showed up a little bit early and we were trying to figure out all the things that we needed. And uh, power was what we needed. We needed some electricity. And so we, uh, we scanned all around what we could do and everybody had an idea. I called Kyle. Kyle said he would be there in 20 minutes. And I went over to the maintenance shop and there was Rusty Davis. And Rusty Davis is the new parks foreman. And uh, Instead of telling me he was off work or he had to go someplace or anything else, he immediately went to my assistance. We got a grinder and we started plugging it into all the outlets. It was the only thing we had to test power with. We found power, and then I it was, and it was quite a ways away, wasn't it, Rusty? Yeah. And so I said, "Do we have any extension cords?" Now, typically, the answer should have been, "Yeah, but you can't use them." Right? Because how am I going to get them back? You're going to need them until 9 o'clock tonight. But instead, he said, yeah, I'll go get them. When I came back at 9 o'clock to help clean up and pick up, who did I find? I mentioned to Rusty. I said, Rusty, let's make sure we find those extension cords, because they were big, expensive extension cords that he went and got. He said, I'll take care of it. So when I got back there to try to help pick up, Rusty was still there. And did we, did we keep our extension cords? Yeah, we did. We got all <laughs> so, Rusty, come on up, and I'd like to present you with this appreciation. Now, last but not least, and these have been a, a while coming, and so I, I appreciate people's patience with me. I've had a lot of help. Megan poured out these these certificates and, and Tony's been working behind the, the scenes and so has Kyle to get me all the things I need. <clears throat> when the business council was in Riverton, they asked me if I would go on the tour with the, the committee. And so we were gonna, we toured from North Federal, from the Shoshone, uh, Eastern Shoshone Park clear to the city park, up to the airport. And as I got on to that bus, one of the ladies that was in the committee commenced to tell me that I read the article about how the state had changed their mind and was gonna allow cities to join the insurance pool. And I listened very politely, because she was real excited. Her husband was the mayor of Kimmer, and he was really thrilled with the opportunity that cities and towns are going to be able to join the state's insurance pool. So I, I mentioned, you know, that is our clerk that helped push that through and has been the groundwork for that. And she said, well, you know, actually, now that you mention her name, you're right. That's what the article said. So, Kristen, would you come up? I know Kristen's worked with this not just for a little while. This has been a long achievement, and we appreciate your efforts. And, and I know that it'll, it'll turn into to a lot of fun to say for the city. So I appreciate it.
We tried to make those run last week and um, prior, and so it's, it's just kind of one of those things that is tough to get scheduled. So I appreciate your effort. I didn't want everybody to have to wait until the mayor's comments, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much for your help. Item 8, would the city clerk please read the consent agenda by title only? Yes, Your Honor. Approval of the minutes, June 4, 2019, regular council meeting. <coughs> Approval of the minutes, June 11, 2019, special council meeting. Approval of the minutes, June 18, 2019, finance committee meeting. Approval of the finance committee recommendations for June 18, 2019. And approval of the municipal court report for the month of May, 2019. Thank you. Are there any items requiring further discussion? Your Honor, um, the, cons the recommendation from the Finance Committee is for claims to be paid in the amount of uh, $576,485.76, payroll liabilities for June 7, 2019, in the amount of $207,068.96 for a total of $783,000. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. So moved. Second. Councilman Schatza with the motion and Councilman Roeder with the second. Any discussion? Your Honor, I would abstain from the Bailey Enterprises line item on the Finance Committee report. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say none. Say no. And motion passes with one abstention. Ordinance number 19005, third reading and fi third and final reading, RMC chapter 5.04 revision. Would the city clerk please read the ordinance number 19-00 by title only? Yes, Your Honor. Proposed ordinance number 19-005 on third and final reading. An ordinance amending Title V, Business Licenses and Regulations, to revise Chapter 5.04, Alcoholic Beverages, Section 5.04.220, Revocation of the Riverton Municipal Code, and repealing all ordinances or, or parts of ordinances in conflict therewith and providing for an effective date. Thank you. The Chair would entertain a motion to adopt ordinance number 19005 on third re third and final reading. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Larson and a second by Councilwoman Borders. Any discussion? Would the city clerk please conduct roll call vote? Yes, Your Honor. Councilwoman Carla Borders. Yes. Councilman Tim Hancock. Aye. Councilman Mike Bailey. Aye. Councilwoman Rebecca Schatze. Aye. Councilman Kyle Larson. Aye. Councilman Corey Rhoda. Aye. Mayor Richard Gard. Aye. Motion passes. Ordinance number 19-00, third and final reading, the RMC Chapter 5.04 Legislative Revisions. Would the city clerk please read the ordinance number 19-007 by title only yes your honor proposed ordinance number 19-007 on third and final reading an ordinance amending title five business licenses and regulations to revise chapter 5.04 alcoholic beverages sections 5.04.100 permit for retail sales at picnics bazaars fairs etc 5.04.230 issuance of liquor licenses by category and 5.04.270 is issuance by classes of the Riverton Municipal Code and repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict therewith and providing for an effective date. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion for ordinance number 19007 on third and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Councilman Rhoda with the motion and Councilman Bailey with the second. Any further discussion? Would the city clerk please conduct a roll call vote? Yes, Your Honor. Councilman Corey Rhoda. 
Aye. Councilman Kyle Larson. Aye. Councilwoman Rebecca Schatze. Aye. Councilman Mike Bailey. Aye. Councilman Tim Hancock. Aye. Councilwoman Carla Borders. Aye. Mayor Richard Gard. Aye. Motion passes. Bid award for Village Drive. Would the Public Works Director give us this report, please? Thank you, Your Honor. This is the third 1% project to go this construction season. It is a service improvement project for Village Drive. This will include drainage improvements for the curb and gutter, ADA improvements uh, for uh, accessibility ramps, and then also rehabilitation of the asphalt that's in that area. The project will run from Riverside Drive to Riverview. And it uh, also will include a little bit of work at the intersection of Village and Riverview Road. Um, those plans are in your packet. We'd be happy to answer any questions if you have them at a later time. Staff was able to economize 1% funds by surveying, designing, and preparing the bid documents for this project. We did, however, utilize a third-party surveying and engineering firm to help us with the intersection to ensure that we complied with citizen feedback and best practices for the industry um, according to AASHTO standards. Uh, after the bid package was prepared, bids were received and opened on June 12th, 2019 with the following results. Dave's Asphalt Company with a bid total of $627,922. 71 Construction Incorporated with a bid total of $631,056. And Knife River Construction with a bid total of $793,775. Staff reviewed each of these bid submittals to ensure they were responsive to bid, uh, bid specifications and each uh, met what we had advertised. We therefore recommend that the City Council award the Vill Village Drive Service Improvement Project uh, to Dave's Asphalt Company in the amount of $627,922. There are sufficient funds in the 1% account for this project and this meets our goal to improve the infrastructure within Riverton. Thank you. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion to award the bid for Village Drive's surface improvement project to Dave's Asphalt in the amount of $627,922. I would so move. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Borders and a second by Councilman Hancock. Any further discussion? Yes, Kyle. Um, what was the, did we have an in-house bid or an estimate on that? Yes, Your Honor, we did, and I just pulled off that page, but it's around 683000 if I remember correctly. Hey, I did. <laughs> 683000 was the engineer's estimate, and I think uh, a lot of credit is uh, owed to Brendan Toman, who came on board as our new city engineer, who finalized this project and, and made some very important additions to the design that we had already started. So um, kudos to him for his hard work on that. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed <clears throat> say nay. Motion passes. Consideration of Javiation's contract. Public Works Director's report, please. Thank you, Your Honor. This contract um, formalizes the selection that was made by the City Council at its uh, May 7, 2019 meeting. As you remember, our contract for engineering services at the airport uh, expired and we needed to advertise for a new five-year contract. Javiation was selected as the most qualified firm and staff was directed to go into contract negotiations and establish a contract with them. What is included in your packet is that contract. In brief, that contract addresses a five-year term and it will um, have projects listed in your packet one through ten that they will work on and it also includes anything else that the city does require of them during that five-year period the contract itself does not have a monetary amount and that is because each of these projects will require an amendment we will receive a cost estimate from Javiation at that time and then we'll bring the amendment to council 
for approval for each of these projects. Most of the projects um, will also require an independent fee estimate, especially if they receive federal funds. That independent fee estimate will be a check and balance of sort against uh, the amendment that we will propose to you in the future for the projects listed and outlined in your packet. Um, an example of those um, of uh, of such an amendment is included in your packet at the very end of the uh, contract. Uh, the city uh, staff has worked with Javiation. We've also ensured that the contract before you complies with federal and FAA regulations, and we therefore recommend that the city of Riverton enter into an agreement with Javiation Incorporated for five years of engineering services at Riverton Regional Airport. Thank you. <clears throat> The chair would entertain a motion to approve the contract agreement between the city of Riverton and JV Aviation uh, Inc. for the engineering services at the Riverton Regional Air Airport. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Councilwoman Schatza and a second by Councilmember Bailey. Any further discussion? Your Honor. Yes. Generally speaking, most of what we've got in this contract match up with what we did with them five years ago? Your Honor, that is correct. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion passes. <coughs> Consideration of airport grant, ground lease for the, Bureau, for the Bureau of Land Management, the BLM. Public Works Director's report, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the Bureau of Land Management um, contracts for um, firefighting services in our region. They use single-engine air tankers for this service, the SEAT uh, uh, aircraft. So we call this a SEAT-based lease in brief. Uh, BLM has operated out of Riverton Regional for several years to provide this regional firefighting coverage and uh, their lease expired this current fiscal year. Their previous lease was a one-year lease with four optional renewal periods. Last year, they exercised the final optional renewal period. So the lease in your packet is a brand new lease with a uh, one-year term and four optional renewal periods. Um, the square footage of the lease has two options. You'll notice there's an Exhibit A and an Exhibit B to the lease that's proposed. Exhibit A represents the square footage that they currently occupy. However, in working with um, the field operators, they have mentioned that during heavy operational years, so when there are years of a lot of wildfires, they do require a larger uh, square footage footprint. Therefore, this lease also um, allows for an alternate square footage that they can occupy, and that is uh, 29,984 square feet. So the lease allows for an annual rental based on the square footage they currently use, but then allows us to exercise an option with the BLM during high operational seasons so that they can um, have the space necessary to operate out of Riverton Regional. Staff therefore recommends that the City Council um, execute a lease with the BLM um, for the seat base operating um, footprint at Riverton Regional Airport. Thank you. The Chair would entertain a motion to approve the lease agreement with the Bureau of Land Management for the ground lease space at the Riverton Regional Airport. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Councilwoman Borders and a second by Councilman Mike Bailey, um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. We're down to comments. So maybe the guy that got all of the food stuff, because <laughs> all of us are hungry, got could you start us? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> we had a meeting last night for the uh, Community Engagement Committee. Um, I'll let Corey speak on that um, if, if I miss anything. But um, after the meeting, we had dis we actually invited um, a couple of different people to attend the meeting. We invited the um, new chamber director, Ashley Strickland, so we all got to meet her. Um, we feel like the Community Engagement Committee would work hand-in-hand -hand with the 
Riverton Chamber of Commerce. So I want to invite her to let her know what we have going on so that it, if she needs us or we need her, we can build that relationship with them. I feel like that's very important. Also, um, Steve Doyle with the uh, Riverton Farmer's Market, Wednesday Night Farmer's Market, showed up, and he just wanted to thank the group um, previously known as the, the Parks Committee. He wanted to thank us for opening up that door for the conversation to move them down to City Park. They said that as of right now, they have more foot traffic than they did late August of the years prior. So they said they're just expecting to grow and grow and grow and probably need more space than they currently have at the city park. So that's only that's just great news. Um, and just wanted to thank the committee and the citizens for being so open to different ideas. Um, we finished the meeting with um, a, sh a discussion on the rendezvous games this for this summer, um, August 17th. Uh, 2019 um, so we're getting the final um, stuff worked out for that um, registration should open soon um, so if you have a team uh, get ready for that um, the chamber we had a meeting a couple weeks ago we just discussed the um, the live at five in the splash pad um, event and hoping to do that some more um, and then of course it has been kind of slow due to the change in the chamber director um, and then uh, that's all I really have. I just want to say thank you to the community for being so supportive of everything that we do and everything that we're trying to get going. Um, I constantly am getting thanks from, from people in the community for everything that we're doing as far as the rendezvous games and farmer's market and kicking trash and everything else. And I just want to say that the, it just makes me want to work harder. <laughs> you know, when I hear somebody say thank you or this is amazing looking over here and I, just, I don't even know what to do you know it, it's just it's just great and I just want to say that um, I just want to make sure that I live up to everything that they hope that I, that I am and that we can do so thank you for that thank you Kyle uh, farmers market was a total success I know um, when you and I were on the council together we tried uh, different ways to get the farmers market down there and uh, until we got the splash pad and a few other things uh, but now it's there and uh, they had great success great success and uh, the community supported them there was a lot of foot traffic but more than ever thing it was they were happy they were glad to be there and uh, couldn't use the park in a better manner. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, Mayor, um, just to piggyback off of Rebecca a little bit, we had the Community Engagement Committee. We set a list of priorities, uh, kind of put together a collective idea of um, what we'd like to accomplish. Uh, one of those things I kind of want to put out there, excuse me, I want to put out there right now, is we want to try to get uh, at least one person from all the organizations around town and we want to create what we're calling the uh seesaws i think is what it is um and it's a community service organization gathering uh so basically we want to bring together a couple heads from all the different organizations in riverton and get them to sit down uh maybe quarterly so they can kind of create an agenda together and uh have a little bit better flow on that uh, aside from that, I don't have too much. Again, the farmer's market, they were ecstatic, um, and the rendezvous games are going to be very exciting this year. So that is all, Mayor. I looked and looked for you guys last night. You should tell the mayor where you're at. Because <laughs> <laughs> what if I was in charge and I didn't know where you were? <laughs> <laughs> where were you? If it means or wreck. if it means anything, I almost went to the wrong place too. If I would pay attention, I could have found you, right? Every the next meeting will be in two weeks, and that'll be at the um, that one outside of the depot restaurant. Okay. So. I looked in the back council room. I looked in the forward council room. I searched all over for you, but like a lost child, there I was <laughs> trying to find you, Mike. Um, I, I guess I apologize for not being here last week. Um, Bo Sheets and I went on a whirlwind meat packing plant tour through South Dakota, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Did five days, visited 12 different plants. Um, 
had a lot of meat sticks, jerky. <laughs> <laughs> My diet was out the window. So, um, so I, I did miss the force committee, but uh, again, it's great to see that we're getting projects under contract and, you know, for less than we expect, and we've got a little, <coughs> we're doing really well budget wise on the amount of money we're spending, and looks like we're going to maybe be able to pull in one more project this year if everything works out right. And so I, I think that's a great example of what everybody working together, you know, the taxpayers helping fund that and us being able to get a lot of needed work done. And we got a lot of work left to do in the future, but uh, we're, we're making headway. And, and I get lots of comments from people on, you know, the, the projects that we're doing and, and the improvements that they're seeing get done. So I think it's a very, you know, important thing that we keep that going as much as we can. And so that's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Hancock. Um, two things I wanted to talk about tonight. The first one, um, we heard from the census uh, folks uh, at our last meeting. Um, and I, I guess I just kind of was curious. We didn't really discuss it at the time, but I do think that there, um, I think it'd be a good idea for the city to actually get behind a CCC, what, the, the, what did it stand for, Complete Count Committee. Um, it, we didn't really have a motion or anything last time, but I, I would just put that out there. I think it'd be something good for us to get behind. I think the way that they had discussed it was that committee members would be appointed by the mayor of the city. Uh, they'd be in charge with increasing the self-response rate, communicating the importance of the census, weight, raising awareness of the census, and motivating every household to participate in the census. Um, had a lot of different people that they had listed as possible members, elected officials, city planners, heads of governmental agencies. We had talked a little bit about maybe even the county, which I don't know if they will do one as well. And I had asked that with the thought that maybe the county would be the better place for it, but I, I really do feel like Riverton needs to get behind it. It's very important, I mean, just in terms of when we were talking about it, even at the, at the WAM meeting, in the winter WAM meeting, that. Uh, never really realize exactly how much the census is used for federal dollars and that kind of thing. So I, I just would put that out there. I don't know if we'd need a motion uh, or if we could do that here where it wasn't advertised for it or anything, but I do think it would make sense for us to, to set up a CCC um, from Riverton. Um, so then the other thing I wanted to bring up this is just feedback that I've gotten actually from more than one person. I've, I've been walking to work and there was a gentleman who approached me as I was walking to work. I'm always surprised not to see Rebecca because we kind of go by the same area. But <laughs> anyway, I had a gentleman who approached me and was talking about the um, speed limits in the city. He was saying that it's really frustrating to him to try to get across major when you've got people that have just barely slowed down from 45 as they're coming into town. And he was like, isn't there any way that you could put that speed limit sign back there near the Maverick where the other one is going out of town? So I had asked Tony about that, and he had contacted YDOT, just curiosity. Who, who controls it? How could anything be done about that? And they had responded and said, if, if they wanted to change the speed or anything in the area, normally they'd have to do a speed study, which would be, you know, the little um, wire strips across the road. Across the road. But he did say, because it's mismatched, where there's one as you're going out of town at the Maverick and one where you're coming in town that's a little bit further closer to the Smiths, he said they would actually be willing to move the, them so that they're together at the Maverick. Mm. My impression was, though, he would want to have the city that would be requesting that. Generally speaking, I think we don't, we don't get to control the speed limits on the highways coming through, but he was willing to do that if the city was behind him on it and I said well we'll talk about it tonight and see what people think about that so two proposals that I just wanted to see if somebody wanted to do something about if we wanted to set up a CCC or if we wanted to request YDOT to move the sign and I don't know whatever the process would be but I think at least if we said yeah we're behind it 
Sounds like you'd be willing to move it. Could we get those on the agenda for next meeting? So Absolutely. Move those forward? Runner. I think they're both great ideas. So, um, I did have some other in action with that said. People are using Pure, or, um, Missouri Valley to go past Riverton. And so today, the last two mornings, I've had to go to Hudson for mayor meetings. And um, the rendezvous road is all 55 miles an hour. And if we could, and I mentioned that to um, Eli Bebout last night in a meeting we were in, and maybe we could lower those speed limits through Missouri Valley and, and make that so it was not time sensitive to go through. It's only like a minute or two faster to go through Missouri Valley than to come through Riverton. And Google is turning everybody at that location. So that's another thing that we ought to take a look at. There's been all sorts of suggestions. Uh, I don't know that we can move the speed limit. My experience is that's great that you got that much movement. Usually it's written in stone. Eli just laughed at me. So the speed limit probably isn't going to go down. But if we could do some proactive things there, that might be something that we would would get some traction on. Your Honor? Yes. I do know that um, a meeting that we had with the chamber about two months ago, that there is a group currently working on signage um, because they did look into that. But the only way to change the speed limits there, they said, was if there was a safety issue with that. So the chamber has a group working to put signs out that direction to, tr to keep them coming into Riverton. That's Wind River Development, isn't it? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and they're, they're trying to do that. And I think that's really important if we could get some even billboards there that said services directly on, you know, doesn't save you that much time. But I think those are good. We'll have those on the next agenda. Thanks, Councilman. Carla. Um, I think about the only thing that I have is I attended the Google Maps meeting last week. I'm good. It was a tough choice because they did the pianos that night, too, <laughs> <laughs> which was awesome. But, um, the Google Maps committee is um, there's a group of a lot of people. don't know exactly how many, but um, Google has employed a private company to come through and do the 360 view through Riverton. They're going to start at the Wind River Casino and come to Sunset. Then they're going to go from Main Street up to the airport. This is going to happen next Wednesday, the 26th, at, I believe, 9 in the morning. Um, they'll do the 360 view. We've got a committee that um, they're going to have people doing yoga in the park, skateboarders, Zumba in the park. The farmer's market's going to set up some of their stations there um, so we want all the help we can get uh, we just want to populate the street and make it look very attractive so maybe you know those new photos will show up on Google when you Google Riverton and maybe we can detour them from Missouri Valley sure. and rendezvous and Fort Washakie we want to try to draw them here so um, Saturday I think there's going to be a group of people out working uh, I'm not sure exactly what time 8 a.m. Um, they're reading at the Safeway parking lot, and it's on our Kick and Trash in Riverton Facebook page if they want to look it up. Awesome. Awesome. So, so uh, I think that's about all I have. The Shriners are going to have their parade um, around 9 o'clock at the post office is where they're going to try to pick up the, the Google car. Mm -hmm. And so um, um, Kathy... Klein is is the chair there, and Kathy's really pushing that hard. And so, anything that we can do to help, I've even noticed. I, I noticed that the days in their previous location that the weeds were really high, and I thought that I would go up there and and cut those, and they did it yesterday. So, I know there's people. Um, you said somebody was contact. Randy Lehman just said to us while he was here earlier that that. Um, they're contacting businesses and asking them to, to clean up and, and get ready and, and look. So, um, I'm sorry, one other thing. Sure. Uh, there will be another meeting for this Google Maps group tomorrow night at 6.30 here in council chambers. So anyone that is interested in coming or helping would be, would be greatly appreciated to have you there. We'd love to have more help, more, more hands, lighter work. What time? What time? 6 o'clock. 30. 6.30? Tomorrow night, yes. 6.30, is that correct? Mm -hmm. That yeah. is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, 
city administrator. You thought I was going to jump you, didn't you? <laughs> uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just a couple items. There will be a public meeting pertaining to the East Bell project on Thursday at 6 p.m. It'll be in the courtroom next door to where we are now. Um, it is a public meeting for those projects. It is 1%. So um, if anybody would like to attend, uh, they are welcome. Uh, we did attend a the Manita Divide public information meeting today at the library. I know the mayor was there. I was there, and I had to leave after about 30 minutes. Um, but it was good information. One of the items that um, I had actually sent to council now and uh, some of staff is they did a really nice job of putting together all of the uh, options that may be considered part of any EIS proposal. Uh, they have to develop predetermined options, and those options aren't set in stone, but uh, they are options that generate discussion, and they put those on a board. Um, so we're going to try to get that graphic and provide it um, in a better format than my phone picture. But it was useful, so uh, they did a presentation, and it was a good presentation. I think the meeting was relatively well attended, and there was plenty of resources there. Um, the mayor and I attended WAM a meeting last week uh, in Sheridan. It was a very good meeting uh, dealing with legislation, uh, some of the items that came through. I believe we had 10 items on our legislative agenda that were voted on. Um, and we will be bringing those to council for a, for a brief discussion. That will probably be at the next meeting or the meeting thereafter. Obviously, we have a little bit of time before the legislature meets, but we do want to have you up to speed on some of the items and make sure that we know exactly what you want to supporting, um, actively putting staff time towards and the like and other things that we're going to monitor. So uh, that will be a little bit of a new conversation, how we have it, but we look forward to having it. Not complex, just takes a little bit of time. Um, Keep, keep, uh, there will be a meeting next Thursday. It is the end at 5.30, the 27th here. It will be our end of the year budget amendments, uh, which we do every year. Uh, we appreciate your patience and your ability to meet at a non-standard time. It does help us. So we appreciate that, and it will be here in these, in these chambers at that time. Um, and the last one is RACDA will meet on the 26th at the Sundowner. Uh, city staff will be presenting on the master plan, accepting feedback, uh, having that discussion. We look forward to that. That's ending. That that entire process is ending up right now. So we're looking forward to having that conversation. And obviously, we're going to need to sit down in the very near future and talk about our next year goals. Uh, usually, we would have done that a little bit by now, but it's kind of counterproductive to say, hey, let's do a set of goals or have a discussion about where our efforts go over the coming year. And oh, by the way, two weeks, three weeks later, here's your master plan. Do they line up? Um, so we thought we'd just be patient for a minute so we have one big conversation. Um, I have nothing else, Your Honor, but if anybody has any questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Meetings next Thursday. Did we decide it on that? Okay, I didn't get a final email on that. Just to clarify, this Thursday or Thursday? Next, next, the 27th, next Thursday, the 27th, 27th at 530. 5.30 p.m. in here. And we only have um, uh, probably two or three items. Um, there was one other one that was added other than that that was shorter. I think it was a lease. Did we, yeah, we have a lease that we're working through. If we're going to do business, we might as well get it on there. The other one that we might have, and you reminded me of this, the, the mayor and I had a conversation. For whatever reason, in an EIS, I'm going to go back to that. In an EIS, you have participating agencies. Um, found out tonight, Riverton is not one of the participating agencies. I'm not sure why. The thing is probably because it's been up and down, up and down for a decade. Okay, that's not a problem. We spoke with staff from the BLM, and we are, and we've already sent the email that allows us to get that process rolling. So you're going to have an, an MOU in front of you in the near future that is um, relatively standard that will allow us to be part of, will be become a uh, participating agency. Why does that matter? Because it allows us standing at the table when these decisions get made. It allows us to have formal input into the that they have to listen to. That's a very, those are some pretty broad statements, but it's going to be important. Um, so we're going to have that moving forward uh, as soon as we can get it. We've we've begun that process. We hope to be able to turn it around by the next meeting. 
Your Honor, I have nothing else. Thank you. Um, Chief, I missed the information that you gave me about our two police officers, their, their military service record. Would you inform us on that? Your Honor, you bet. So Billy Whiteplume and Peter McCall, who you presented awards tonight, both were in the United States Army. Uh, they were both deployed several times, uh, I believe, to both Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, and that was one of the big reasons that Billy Whiteplume did receive that award from Leadership Fremont County. Uh, he did um, give a really great speech. Everybody was uh, pretty impressed with his military service. Um, and again, him and Pete, uh, as I told you earlier, they're both very humble about their military service. And uh, I think that's what makes them both very special. I appreciate that. Uh, how many Colts have you had so far? Three, and I have pictures if everybody wants to see them. <laughs> <laughs> they are gorgeous animals, so I wish I had one. Um, I would like to take a moment and to thank Ernie while he's in the room. Ernie sits on our FAST committee and is always sending out the notes. His fingers never stop moving. Um, but besides that, he lets us come in on Mondays and Wednesdays before council meetings and lets us get on the radio, Tony and myself. And so it's really good information. If there's, if there's things that you guys want to get out, kicking trash or, or uh, maybe where your meeting might be so the mayor could find it, um, those things, that would be a real opportunity to, to get a, a bigger audience. And so, Ernie, I appreciate what you do for us. You're welcome. You are very valuable to FAST, and you, you've been good help. The other thing that I've been watching is uh, uh, the asphalt replacement through town. And uh, I think Kyle and Tony get tired of me, but every time I drive over a pothole, I call and say, this, I found another pothole. And um, one of the things they taught us up at Wham is if you don't tell them what you need, you don't get anything done. And so we have really good staff, all all of our staff heads, all six of them that sit over there through every meeting, are very responsive. And when asked to do something, you guys pull it off. And I appreciate that. So thank you. I, I appreciate that. The asphalt replacements have been great. The one on Main Street I really like. I haven't got any calls about the mayor on it, though. But, but um, it's, it's really well done. And um, I think the guys do a real good job of that. So. We're looking into, we have some other good news that we just got yesterday. Um, we sent a letter to, um, to Smith's Grocery for the potholes that lay between um, Arby's and the old uh, McDonald's area. And they sent back a really nice letter that said that um, they are moving up their... Uh, fuel station construction and they hope to get it completed in 19, 2019. And Eric's shaking his head over there because he's been on the ground floor of that and helped push that forward. And we had thought there for a while that they were going to do it in 2020, but they're going to try to complete it this year. So that's really great news. So um, we appreciate that information. Um, other than that, um, we did go to Wham, and I would encourage people to take the opportunity to go to Wham. Um, they recognized the city of Shoshone, the little town of Shoshone. They had all of their council people at Wham and their mayor, and so um, which consisted of five or six, five. five. And so, um, if you ever want to go, it's very, op it's very open opportunity, and, and you learn a lot of things. You get to talk to other council people. Um, it does take a few days out of your schedule, but we'll try to get those numbers out in front of you so that you can maybe put those on your schedule for, so you can, you can get that experience. Um, other than that, I do have, um, I've had a meeting with Little League Baseball, and uh, Little League Baseball is in need of donations. They've done some really good things down at the Little League Park. Um, but they could use donations. So if there's anybody out there that uh, feels like they could support Little League Baseball, would you please get a hold of one of their representatives and, and uh, share some, some cash with them that they might be able to put the fireworks display off that they're 
that they're talking about doing. Um, I also, one of those phone calls, and actually why I was searching for the committee last night, <laughs> Kyle was still in the office, but he had lost his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I could catch him and we had a conversation about uh, um, the trash cans down at the at, uh, Little League when Tony and I were at Wham one of the real big factors that they've come up with is smart cities and smart cities is a technology um, enhanced it turns on lights it, it turns down lights it turns on water um, one of the things that was kind of humorous that they pointed out was they researched through different areas. The police were having problems in a city, in their city park, from 1 to 3 in the morning. And it never occurred to them to ever marry that information across from one division of the city to the other. So with the smart cities, they pointed out that maybe the water department, the, the parks department, could turn on their sprinklers between one and three. And it, and it cut their crime problems. Mm -hmm. And so um, they also pointed out things like there's now new sensors that they can put in trash cans. So that's what Kyle and I were talking about, Little League's trash cans. They sent me pictures and the trash cans were full. And they were pointing out in the meeting at Wham that they can put sensors in trash cans so that you don't have to pick up every trash can you pick up the trash cans that are full. And so it saves time. And, and uh, so there's lots of interesting things that you find when you go to those meetings. And I appreciate the, uh, Tony's time in going and the opportunity to, to do that myself. The mayors, um, we met this morning. Um, the, R, the WRTA is having a little bit of a spat with financing from the state. Um, but we got all the way around to the fact that maybe we could get the paperwork done and the stuff in place so they, RTW, RW, R, WRTA, could run a, service, a bus service out of Riverton Lander to Casper. And so, you know, and that came about from the conversation in the, in the Solutions Committee of dumping folks in town. And so I appreciate all that stuff coming together and it really does help. I appreciate the efforts that the council makes. Um, we have some real go-getters. I appreciate y'all. So, um, is there an executive necessary tonight? No, Your Honor. The chair would entertain a motion to adjourn the regular council meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Councilman Hancock and a second from Councilwoman Schatza. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. The meeting stand. The meeting of the Riverton City Council stand, stands adjourned at 8:03.